we're going to get started. I'd like to invite you to come back um, while we're getting the, uh, the live stream going. If everyone could make their way back, that would be nice. Okay, hello everybody. Can you um um where is somebody? Yeah, could you? Somebody. Thank you, John. Just have him come back in. How are we doing, Anthony? Are we good? Thank you, Anthony. Okay, so this is the 11th annual um, uh, unsession, and for those of you that are not familiar with either this um, unsession or with um, you know unconference uh, um, experiences, it's basically just an open uh, mic uh, for us to share things with each other that um, might be cool or interesting or. Um, uh, some initiative that you might be doing on your campus or some um, activity, lesson learned, something could be shareable in the form of a link or uh, you could just come up and introduce yourself to the community if, if you wanted to. Um, we have done this, like I said, this is the 11th year and we always have um, a bunch of really interesting and cool things to share. The sign-in is that bit.ly that you, uh, that I had posted um, and I see that there are a bunch of people signed up uh, already. Um, as usual, I, I usually like to go first um, just to, you know, sometimes people are a little bit shy and so I, I try and model uh, what we're doing here. And um, so a couple of new things I have to share with the community uh, is uh, this um, new Oscar-related uh, um, implementation plan. So I've created um, uh, a template, essentially, to um, support an online course quality initiative at an institutional level, right? So if you are in charge of online course quality in, at your institution, so this isn't specifically about doing a specific course review, it is about addressing the issue of online course quality at the institutional level. And so this is an implementation plan that I created. It's a template and you simply go in, uh, make a copy, make, duplicate the, uh, the document and um, then begin um, following the instructions which are in italic and you just fill out the, um, the template with, uh, with information uh, that is specific to your uh, institutional level um, uh, course quality initiative. So um, in the bit.ly link uh, is the, are, are the links to all of the resources. So there's actually a whole folder of resources that goes with, uh, uh, with this particular um, tool. Um, and um, so there's a, there's a ton of resources in here uh, in how to actually use and implement this, uh, this templated implementation plan. I want to put a plug in for my CIT workshop uh, this year where I will be running a three hour workshop around the use of this particular uh, set of tools. So if you're interested in having some guidance or some facilitation of taking a look at these tools, I'll be doing a three hour workshop at CIT. I also have um, available some new um, um, 
resources uh, around open pedagogy, uh, pedagogical practices. These are things that I um, do in my own online instruction, and I've created a series of recipe cards um, to, uh, to support some of these open pedagogical practices with this little theme around um, recipes. So uh, you can check those out as well. And then I just have posted a bunch, oh, I'm doing a presentation at CIT on that also. Uh, and next week at uh, the Open Ed Week um, are a number of open pedagogical presentations that SUNY is, uh, um, is promoting. And then I have a bunch of um, other free and openly licensed resources that I wanted to share and make sure those of you who are not familiar with them can check them out. So at when you have time, this is a shared Google Doc that you will always have access to that you can come back to and check out all of the resources that are being posted here. I'm going to call my friend Erin up uh, to come and talk about what she would like to share with us. So it's as easy as that. That wasn't hard, right? <laughs> I'm going to go a little out of order from what's on the document. I wanted to make everyone aware that we have been collecting these unsession documents since 2015. And so you can see the format there. It's just a bit.ly and it's unsession and the year. So you can put in 2015 all the way to present and you can see the collection of all of these really great ideas that people have shared. So check out those past uh, unsessions. Also, uh, Mike Daly couldn't be with us. He's from SUNY OER Services. And Mike asked me to share a link to a, uh, a table. This is a, a great document that, um, that lists out all of the SUNY o OER events uh, for the year. And you can sort by, uh, you can use the sort by filter to do a date range if you want or a type of event if you want, like web, if you just want to see webinars, that sort of thing. So it's a great resource to have, so bookmark that table. And uh, then the last thing, just to introduce to you all today, I'm going to open this one up actually, Alex, real quick. Um, we have expanded our SUNY community of practice. So we've always had online teaching fellows, and uh, we still do. And we want to be inclusive of all of the different roles that are represented in our large SUNY community of online practitioners, which we are affectionately calling SCOOP. So get the SCOOP, here it is. Um, so what we're trying to do is really capture and leverage and understand uh, all of the roles that you all play on uh, your campuses and be able to um, share in that experience and network and collaborate around those things. So you can read more about that here. And you can find any of us who are wearing these handy dandy badges that say, ask me about SCOOP. You can find us uh, out in uh, the foyer during the lunchtime and we can help you uh, fill out your profile. It's a simple checklist. So we would love to have you come and talk to us and learn more about that. And we have a special gift for you if you do. No, it is not ice cream. <laughs> okay, so who's next? Diane? Diane? I'm gonna go to the next person. Diane might be out. I saw Diane, but I don't see her in the room. Okay. Who's next? Who's SUNY Online? SUNY Online is on here. SUNY Online. Okay. Meet the team. It's the it's the coaches. Ah, you guys. <laughs> the blue shirts.
about uh, how we're able to work with our colleagues um, across this, you know, across the state. Many of we have True. colleagues in Buffalo <laughs> and uh, all the way in Albany, so we're not all at system. We're um, we're remote to system, and they actually work out of uh, campuses. So we've developed a knowledge base that um, that everybody had to authenticate. And I'm actually going to delete this link because it's an internal knowledge base for um, for our team. So I just wanted to see. Um, so the, uh, you know, so we we constantly have questions coming, um, you know, from other coaches and coordinators. There's about thirty of us across the state. And growing. Yeah, and with new programs and um, you know programs and processes and. So I'm the administrator, and I'm um, here. It is. So we built this from the ground up. This started with just a link and, and no other documentation. Uh, so this is where all of our coaches and coordinators can come to find information about the SUNY Online Blackboard, the campus information pages. If you're a part of the of the SUNY Online campus, if you're a SUNY Online campus, you filled out all those Excel documents that uh, you're, you know, about admissions and student support. Who your campus leads are, we we aggregated that and we put it all in here in the campus information pages. Um, we have program information and the escalation, you know, who to contact and some of the common questions. We have tuition and financial aid questions. Uh, we have the workflows and processes that we do on a daily basis. Um, you know, information about working with your campus. We have information about uh, working with students. The application is we get a lot of questions about the application. Uh, so with the we work very closely with the RRC. Uh, Megan Dynan and Sherry Perlow have helped us out a lot with that. So we just kind of every question that the coaches and coordinators come across, we try to put it together in one central location where we can all uh, communicate and still feel as like we're part of a team, even though we never see each other's, you know, everybody's faces. So <laughs> So I just wanted to kind of share a little bit about how we're able to uh, work together and not actually be together. In teams, we have about 30 chats going in teams. Coach Larry endorsed your <laughs> So that's us. Just wanted to show you how we do that and kind of the behind the scenes for the, the coaching. Any questions? I'm just going to delete my link. Hello, I'm Diane Hamilton from the University of Albany. Um, this fall, I was very fortunate to have an intern with me. And uh, part of what I wanted him to do was learn all of the Oscar standards so that he could help with uh, course reviews. And one of the projects that he decided to do was to um, create a generator for an accessible um, Oscar-aligned syllabus. Uh, the generator aspect didn't work out as we had planned, but he was able to create a template that when you're done, it will create a Word doc, and just about everything will be accessible. There may be a few adjustments to make. And um, we've made it available through the oscar.suny.edu community resources page. So let's see, we'll take a quick peek. Um, Do you need help? Yep, I got it. Okay, so you'll find it. Whoops. No, that's not right. That's not right. Wrong Let's way. Go to Oscars. All right. Unity. Okay, and so it's right down. Uh, scroll down. Syllabus creation guide. And when you click on there, it takes you to a short two-page guide that gives you basic information on how to use the template and some things to think about in terms of making sure that your, the content you put in is accessible. So it gives you some reminders as a checklist to go back and look at before you complete it. Um, in the middle of the document, he has a link to his template. And it's sort of a fill-in-the-blanks 
situation. Oh, okay. It's going to want you to go into a Google account. That's the one thing that, um, let's see, there's also a doc version. So let's go there instead. Okay, so it has kind of all the pieces that are recommended throughout the Oscar rubric. Um, he has links back to the Oscar site, to the information and videos about each of the standards. And he's got some brief information on why something matters. So it's sort of a learning document for those who are newbies, and it's a reminder document for those who aren't. And once you go through and slot in your information, you can remove parts that are not relevant to your discipline, uh, the kinds of activities that you want to do, things like that. There are suggestions here for you to consider and think about, but it's always up to you. Uh, the tables should be accessible when you get your final document, but you could check that and make sure. And uh, that's pretty much it, a listing of the kinds of policies you want to make sure you put in, um, check with your department or your school to see if they have particular wording, and it just kind of lays out all the details you might need to have in your syllabus. So we thought we would share that with you and uh, hope you find it useful. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Uh, who's next? Yes, Kristen, yep. Hey everyone, so uh, real quick, um, just wanted to give a reminder for the, oh, there's lots of stuff in here now. There's, there's money. That's cool. Um, so quick reminder of the dashboards link. Um, <laughs> I've gotten some questions about the link, so I put that in here for everyone. As a reminder, these are dashboards about all different um, aspects of online learning data that we have. Um, mostly drawing from the uh, CIRRUS data that campuses submit to SUNY system um, and just being able to provide that back to you in Tableau in an interactive format. So feel free to go into there, click around, you can't break anything. Um, if you find any errors, let me know. You should be able to filter everything by your campus um, or uh, sector as well. So if you're trying to look at, you know, comparison and things like that, that is all available for you. And then um, I would like to let you know that the 2019 Open SUNY Impact Report is live and available on this link. Um, you can go here and check it out. We did not print it this year, so we're saving some trees, going green, it's available digitally. Um, you can scroll through this, similar format. Um, again, the data is for 2018-19, so some of it, like the number of programs might be slightly different than the number Kim shared yesterday because she's using the number as of today rather than the number as of this uh, publication. But feel free to scroll through, we've got a new chart here that describes some of the similarities and differences between Open SUNY, Open SUNY Plus, SUNY Online, kind of summarizing Kim's presentation yesterday. We have a reminder of the Open SUNY Plus signature elements as well as the programs that were involved in SUNY Online for the pilot in the fall and spring. So, uh, and then of course it goes on um, with lots of information about all of Open SUNY services and how we're supporting students and campuses and faculty and then some additional data charts at the end. So. Feel free to check it out. It's available now. There's the link. Yay. <laughs> Melissa? <clears throat> Where are you from, Melissa? See if this will work on you. Okay, so unfortunately, uh, you won't have access if you clicked on the link. I kind of just put it in there because it was easier for me to get in here. But um, what I wanted to show you was um, what we call Media Space. And it's basically a video repository where we have tutorial videos uh, for students and faculty. And we have it broken down into different categories. So for students, right now we have um, specific tutorials on Blackboard, a digital learning overview, 
uh, Google Drive and we have Tech Tips. And so the students have access to it and they can go and they can, um, you know, click on the, um, the different areas. And then there are basically videos that we've worked to create on every single component of Blackboard possible. And the really great thing about this is that the faculty members can embed these videos into their Blackboard courses. So um, the, they can go in and get the um, embed code and put it in. So we're, uh, we just rolled this out a few months ago, and so we're trying to promote it and get more faculty to do so. But I think it'll really help the students to have a better understanding of how to perform some of these uh, you know, simple, what, what we think are simple tasks um, are complex to some of the students when it's the first time taking an online class. So something like sending an email or using the content editor in Blackboard. The videos are about one to two minutes, so um, not to lose their interest, but to give them a quick overview of how to perform whatever task it is. And um, yeah, I have actually created all of the student videos. But it's a team effort because there's a graphic designer who created the thumbnail that goes um, in front of all of the videos. And then there's somebody who works on the back end to, um, you know, make it look the way it is and, um, you know, to have it as organized and, uh, yeah, looking so uh, professional, I guess you would say. And we also have videos for faculty members. so change the colors a little bit, but um, more or less for uh, people who are new and they just want to learn some basics, we have a repository for them as well. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show. Any questions? Yes. <laughs> so right now it's, um, it's closed. It's only available for, um, you know, those who are in NASA, but um, if we, I don't know, we might be able to maybe share it out at some point. I can see what we're able to do because media space is kind of like a, it's embedded into our uh, portal. So I was using uh, Screencast, uh, Screencast-O-Matic, sorry, Screencast-O-Matic. And um, we, uh, I took the videos from there, put them into Kaltura. Kaltura did the captioning. I went in and I edited the captions myself to make them, um, you know, ide ideally perfect. And then, um, yeah, they're put into Media Space, which is the repository. Okay, three minutes. John, you're up. Hi, folks. Well, if you uh, were at last year's conference, you'll remember that I tried to entice uh, you folks with a beautiful picture of the balmy uh, Plattsburgh City Beach. And I got no takers, so this year I'm going to be a little more realistic and tell you that it's freaking cold up there. But that's okay, because there's still stuff to do. So um, I have, uh, I don't know if it's been posted yet. If not, it'll be up within a week or at the most. Uh, we're looking to hire an instructional designer, and um, it's, uh, you know, I mean, you get to work with me. I mean, what else do you need? Uh, but if you do need an extra enticement, I promise you that if one of you or someone you refer to me actually takes the job, um, I will personally pay for them to have a dog sled ride around Lake Placid. <laughs> While we're, while we're doing employment pitches, um, first of all, I want to thank everybody. I don't know most of you here. I've met a bunch of you, and, and thank you for being such a welcoming community. Um, about many years ago, I went to a doodle meeting, and it was really cool, and somehow I ended up in a role at SUNY Poly, where I'm now charged to like do something online. So um, we are launching, um, and it's been really strange, because they, they I became an interim provost, and soon I'll go back to my online program as a faculty member and, 
And, um, but in the meantime, we're launching something that, believe it or not, we're calling SUNY Poly Plus, just because there wasn't enough confusion in the world. So SUNY Poly Plus situates SUNY Poly between Open SUNY Plus and Open SUNY Plus and SUNY Online. So one of the things that we're doing is creating a faculty academy, which is a training opportunity, professional development opportunity for our, our faculty. And we want to hire an instructional designer. Our job's advertised now. So that, that's a, that's a, you know, I, I'm, and I've learned that that's a huge thing when that happens, because it only took six weeks from, that's not bad, right? Um, so good luck in two weeks. That would be impressive. Um, and while I can't offer any dog sled rides around the lake, Utica is where it is. Um, and it's a wonderful place. It's a, it's a great um, campus. And we have a really innovative um, opportunity, I think, to expand. We're really looking to expand our online graduate programs um, and make them uh, compatible with SUNY Online. So we hope to have our programs there. The, the Faculty Academy will be led by a faculty member. So it's an instructional design. We're looking for an instructional design an instructional designer who wants to be a faculty member. Um, and so there's not always a lot of those kinds of jobs around, so we certainly welcome your, your attention. And one of the interesting things we're doing in the academy, what I have, like 30 seconds left? Yeah. OK. Um, is faculty can be able to write proposals as individuals or teams or uh, based on program groups. And so some of the ideas that Marie was talking about earlier about those pods, we sort of have built into the concept the faculty want to do those things. We'll support that. And the academy is not just to train online faculty, but all faculty in using advanced analytics in their course design, as well as, of course, um, using best practices for delivery of online classes. So hope to see your applications. And again, thanks for welcoming me to this community. Thank you, Steve. Lauren? Where's Lauren? Oh, there she is. Good morning. I'm Lauren Bruska from, well, I think it's actually afternoon now. It is 12.05. Um, from the University at Buffalo. And I am here to invite you to our upcoming Genteels conference. Um, this actually aligns a lot with what Maria was talking about earlier. Um, our theme for this year is iGen, how to connect, engage, and inspire the newest generation of students. Um, we didn't save a tree, and we did print paper copies, so I'll pass those around um, if you are available for our conference on March 20th. Um, if you've been to UB, you know that there's no parking. It is during spring break, so there will be plenty of parking. Um, thank you. It is $25. Um, the program is up on the website. And you can register and find out more about our sessions there. Um, our keynote is the co-author of Ma uh, Marching Off the Map with Til Tim Elmore. I don't know if you read that book. Um, and again, you can do the registration and the full program via our website. And the link is in the shared document. Okay, thank you. All right, who's next? Oh, Andrea, good. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, I am Andrea Gilbert from Monroe Community College. And Alex asked me to share some things. So um, we've been busy with SUNY Online. So I asked Tom about that if you see him around. Um, but basically, what I wanted to share is our virtual Fridays. So we know um, training faculty can be challenging. And we're trying to be supportive of our faculty, but also um, helping them to get some of the information that we want them to have. So um, we originally did these longer um, training sessions, and we're still open to, to working one-on-one -on -one with faculty. Um, but this past semester in the fall, we tried what we call our virtual Fridays. So these were 30-minute Zoom sessions, and anybody across the college can jump in to find out what we were doing. Um, these were around the lunchtime hour, so 12 o'clock. Um, and what we tried to do was, you know, give latest Blackboard updates, um, talk about what SUNY Online was. Um, we, I listed a couple of the sessions that we did, accessibility, um, using Zoom um, tools, that sort of thing. So 
we had a lot of um, different options, so anybody can jump, jump in as they wanted to. Basically, these were just structured, so it was informational, and then um, we had time for questions, and then faculty could follow up with us. So if they were interested in finding out more, they can always make an appointment later on. Um, we also did, um, a few of them were for professor showcases as well, so um, we had faculty come in and share. Those were about 45 minutes. They came in in person, but there was still a Zoom option for people to, from other campuses to join in. Um, so we had topics like uh, OER resources and using that in, in your class, um, online video quizzing, voice thread. So they shared how they were using that, and that comes off better from faculty rather than from us always preaching everything. Um, so it went over really well. We got more participation. Um, we're going to try it again this semester and see how that goes. Um, but I think faculty really enjoyed the quick sessions, being able to jump in as they needed to. And then they're all recorded. So we did put the link to the playlist up here um, for our, we use Ensemble. So they're all saved within there and captioned. And so feel free to use them as a resource if you need to. So that's it for me. <laughs> Who's next after Andrea? We've got Ian. Awesome. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good. So <laughs> I'm Ian August. I'm an instructional designer at St. John's University. Um, I just want to talk about a, like one thing we're kind of changing a little bit. Besides doing the normal individual consultations and program consultations with faculty, we're also, we're moving to like some non-traditional instructional design work. So we're working with some non-academic departments. Our school is a Vincentian Catholic University. So we have uh, some face-to-face -face courses to bring employees to, to teach them about our values and our mission. So we've been moving that online. We have a department on campus that uses a lot of design thinking in their pedagogy. And we're working with them to create self-paced non-credit courses uh, for their faculty to get them on board and to get more of them using uh, design thinking pedagogies. Um, that seems to be growing for us, those kind of non-credit bearing, uh, more faculty centered than credit courses or uh, self-paced learning experiences. And just two things I, I really want to focus on more in my work at the university is we have a lot of uh, online faculty that have been trained, that we've worked with, we've consulted with, but then they kind of like go into the ether and we don't hear from them. So we're really trying to bring them in, into a community of learning to get them talking with each other, working together, thinking together. So maybe if anybody's doing something cool like that, you can grab me in the hallway and share some of your stories. And the other thing we're trying to work on more that was inspired by the panel yesterday was really connecting with our clients, like the students. We don't do a lot of work with students, and uh, their voice is super important. So I really want to make a point of uh, connecting more with them and hearing what they have to say and how they can help us in our designs and our work. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Where's Rose? Oh, okay. Linda. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Linda Unger. I'm a senior instructional designer in the Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching at Stony Brook, uh, where I've been for 15 years. Um, and uh, today I just wanted to share with you that we have started or restarted our online institutional readiness process. Uh, we had started it a number of years ago. It couldn't come to completion for various reasons, so we're revisiting that. We're, we're very happy to know that our scores are coming up better uh, six years later, which of course they should. Uh, we still have a ways to go, but we are almost at the end of our information gathering, of reviewing the, the categories against the criteria. So we're really excited about being able to start working on our implementation plan, hopefully in the next week or two. I also wanted to introduce you to the newest member of our team. This is Rose Dorada. She's the Associate Director of the Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching. And I'm super excited to be here um, at SUNY and at Stony Brook. 
and um, we are, we are our instructional design team has expanded very much so since the summer. So we have um, now five instructional designers, a postdoc, and myself, and we are ready to do have an exciting report for you next year. <laughs> Great, thank, thank you, you so much. Awesome, Andrea, where are you at? There you are. So we didn't have anything super exciting to share, but one of the problems that we were having was that we had no repository for our past events. Sometimes we record them, sometimes we pass out slides and everything, so we decided to create, some, uh, create a repository for all of our past events at the CLT. And hopefully it's in there. And it's using Airtable, which I know is super popular right now, and so we've sort of categorized all of our past events um, and then all of them, not all of them, but any ones that we shared resources or shared recordings, it's there um, and available for anybody that goes to the website. I don't know if this is the best way to do this, um, so if you have a better way that you do this, let me know, but this has been working out for us so far. Um, and then I, I just want to put a plug in that I've been talking about this, if you've ever been anywhere with me, that I want a website to, that rules all websites so that all of SUNY can share our resources. Just as I asked, I don't want to recreate those Blackboard videos. I'd like to just use somebody else's Blackboard videos because somebody spent that time and we all have similar Blackboards. This is a site that you can join or that you can add and add, and I don't know if it's going to work because I think it's the join link, yeah but that you can add your resources that you're free to share because OERs or anything that you're using at your campus, like use my slides if you want to. You don't have to create new slides. And I'd really love if all of us could do this so we don't have 28 versions of the same Blackboard video. There's just one really good one that they've already done. So that's my plug. Hopefully you'll share some resources. And if not, you'll hear me say this again in next year. All right. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> Joshua? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Josh Woltz, and I'm from Suffolk County Community College. Thanks, Fabio. Appreciate it. <laughs> Just Fabio, though, no one else, huh? Um, so I'm in the uh, physical education health wellness department and one of the things we were working on was getting physical education courses online so that our students can meet uh, local requirements uh, at Suffolk. We have tremendous support from our administration uh, for physical education and I know that a lot of other colleges within the SUNY system uh, have physical education requirements and they may be struggling to get some of those courses online for our distance education learners. I think the largest barrier uh, when creating this course was related to assessment. The content's out there uh, and we can create it. Uh, it really comes down to in an activity-based course, how can we accurately assess what students are learning, what they're capable of doing, and that progression along the way. Uh, and so we, we, one of the things that we looked at were authentic, formative, summative assessments, uh, and real-time assessments, which were a lot, of done, a lot of it which was done through video analyses, time-lapse videos, um, self-assessments. We did uh, a lot of peer assessments as well. I wanted to make sure not only could they complete the tasks, but could they keep track or, or assess and cr properly critique what other people are doing properly and correctly, and using that as a, a learning experience as well. Um, so if you, if you want more information, or if you're curious to maybe see how it's being done or want to kind of bounce some ideas around, uh, you know, I'll make myself available for sure. So thank you. Thanks, Joshua. Jeff, good. Switch this back. Yeah, to the to the first. Hey, hi, I'm Jeff Thompson from Brockport. One of the biggest announcements we have is that we're no longer in, going to be called the College at Brockport, so we can get included in all your, your meetings because we'll be SUNY Brockport now. <laughs> so it's a good thing. Uh, the second thing is, as I was asked to talk about this, is that we're working with our faculty on accessibility and we are getting a lot of, I don't have time to do this, problems, it's not my issue. We've, I'm actually working with one of the deans uh, from one of the schools to say they want to hire grad students to do the work for, for the faculty. I'm like, that's fine, so we had to create a process to do this and we're actually 
pilot testing this like right this week. It started Monday when I'm here, or I was out of town. I was actually down here Monday. But we're using OneDrive and SharePoint so that we can actually have faculty, we can share a folder with the faculty. They can put their content from their course into this folder. The student that we assign can uh, get into the folder, manipulate the content to be correct. We have a, a, a bogus organization or course that they can upload the content to to see if it gets the correct ally scores. And then they put it back into a, an updated folder and alert the faculty member that the content's there. And then the faculty member is then responsible to review it. Yeah, right? And um, upload it back into their course. Uh, because what we wanted to make sure is the students didn't have access to the faculty's courses, their content, their grades, all the you know editing rights. So what we did is hopefully this is going to work. And if anybody has another option or idea, we'd love to hear it. Uh, but that's how we're addressing this now because faculty just don't have time to manage and change all of the content. And right now we're working with documents and PDFs and we haven't even broached the uh, closed captioning for videos yet. So that's going to just take another, that's, that's another step and hurdle that we're going to have to get through to, uh, to address the accessibility on campus. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Hope. Hi, everybody. I'm Hope Wendell, and I'm from the COIL Center. Does anybody in the room know what COIL stands for? <laughs> Woo! Okay, if you don't, it stands for Collaborative Online International Learning. And um, so on many of your campuses, I think 30 two to be exact. People in the room, put your hand in the air high if you're already doing COIL on your campus. We're proud. Lenore, raise your hand. You're doing it. Yes. It, there we are. Diane, yes. So um, it's collaborative online international learning. The thing here to know is that all of you are secret weapons. And the thing that you need to know that for is that coming down the pike, Todd Larson has you, all of our provost has this new initiative called Global Learning for All, and all campuses need to figure out how they are internationalizing their curriculum and how they are pulling in this concept of internationalization into their campus. And guess what? Coil is going to be the way you're going to get there, and you're going to be the one to say, oh, hello. We can do this. We can do this pretty easily. And it's because you can say, I'm the instructional designer, like Sharon Hope at U Albany. She's the co-coil coordinator on her campus. And instead of like saying to faculty as a group, which no one likes to hear, hey, guys, you should do this, she can one-on-one -on -one say, oh, by the way, you're trying to get more hands-on things in your class, and you're trying to get um, team activities in your class, and oh, you have to internationalize your curriculum. Guess what we can do? And so one-on-one, -on -one, you can have that experience with your faculty and get them to do that with you. So um, this is a great opportunity. This is happening now. It's the snowball is barreling down the hill just like SUNY Online. And so please consider it. And um, I'm here for the whole conference to talk to people about how to do that. And we're having a COIL day in um, June, June 2nd at SUNY Oneonta. And we're also having a COIL day on May 30th here at the Global Center. So please come and use that modality with your faculty. And guess what? Your faculty come away being more digitally proficient, being realizing that they're better in the classroom as a result. So it's a win-win for everyone. So take your secret powers and put them to work for COIL. Yay! Thank you, Hope. Stan, there yes. you are. Hi. I'm going to beef up the size of the text a little bit. I can't see in the back. So that was my reason to be here. Um, Stan Scrabbit from Jamestown Community College on the side, you know, in my off time. I created a little podcast, and it's just a shameless plug for the podcast. Uh, in the classroom with Stan Scrabbit. 
But I would also like to put a shout out to Oswego. They have a wonderful podcast, T for Teaching. And uh, Bonnie uh, Stegoviak, she has one, uh, Teaching in Higher Ed. So there's lots of great podcasts if you're traveling by car, plane, or train, which I am. Plug in and uh, learn some cool stuff. Keep, your, keep, keep on learning, but shameless plug. Thank you. Thank you. Mark? Hey. Hey. Hello, everyone. Um, let me bring up a website. I'm going to talk to you about DOER services. So I don't know if you saw recently the chancellor had a press release. Um, since we've received the state allocation, we've uh, saved students $47 million in textbook costs. Um, yeah, well, that applause should be turned on your faculty because, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it was not an easy thing for them to do. Um, it was another change that we've asked of them to take on. Um, and Median took the risk. Lenore's in the room. And there's a lot of faculty in the room who are teaching with OER, and you're really making dramatic changes in students' lives. Um, at Erie Community College, we've seen another benefit to OER. Now, they were the first ones out there to really code their courses so we could do some of this analysis. Uh, when they've used the product Waymaker that is freely available to all campuses in SUNY, uh, and they've turned on the messaging aspect that's inside Waymaker, which is like an adaptive learning platform, not only have grades increased in those courses, but student retention has gone up. Grades have increased by a half a letter grade. Retention has gone up by 7% in those courses. So retention is a major issue that all our campuses are struggling with. Uh, this is one of the potential solutions that's right there at your fingertips. Um, we also have over 119 courses within the uh, OER services homepage. If you go to oer.suny.edu, you can see the collection of courses that we have available. These are all freely available to you and your faculty and, of course, your students. So if you want to start using these materials uh, in teaching and learning, by all means, if you want some faculty development or a workshop about the use of OER in courses, please reach out to the OER services team. They'd be happy to come. Um, and I think this is making a dramatic impact not only on student savings, but now we're starting to see the impact it's having on our faculty. Our faculty are telling us right now that the use of OER has transformed the way they approach their teaching. Um, so there's, a, there, there's all sorts of benefits to transitioning to OER. On top of that, um, I think you could say the textbook publishing marketplace is dramatically shrinking uh, and starting to implode. Uh, and if the publishers start to sink even further uh, into, I would say, a financial death spiral, um, that is not also going to be good for us. Because if the publishers aren't available to provide learning materials to our campuses, that's another problem we got to think about. So I'm always happy to talk about the costs, but also I think at this time we got to start talking about what our plan is after the course materials marketplace has dramatically shifted. Uh, OER can fill a lot of these needs, but we got to think creatively because we're going to need more solutions than just OER. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Um, so, Aaron, do you want to read the virtual ones? Thank you. They're down at the bottom of the Google Talk first yes. tab. All right. Yeah, so it was great to see some participation from our virtual audience. So thank you for adding those. Uh, for those of you online, let's scroll down here. Look at that. I was even called out by name on that one. Okay. So uh, <laughs> so this is from Robin Sullivan, and you can read this here. Um, if you haven't heard of MTech MOOC, I would encourage you to take a look at that. Um, they are going to be providing, Robin and, and Sheree Van Putten from uh, Binghamton is going to provide an intro webinar for the MTech MOOC as part of Open Education Week. 
Um, and Open Education Week starts next week. It is uh, Monday through Friday, March 2nd through 6th. We are also having other webinars, which I posted up higher in the document. And Robin is uh, one of the ones we're going to add to that. Um, so take a look at that. She is March 3rd from 9.30 to 10 a.m. And then uh, we have one from Christine Page. I thought Christine was here. No? Okay, okay. Okay, so I'll do this for you. So, <laughs> uh, so um, the free technology conference in Saratoga Springs. So you don't have a nice little graphic like John did for, you know, dog sledding or something else in Saratoga Springs, but that's right. So consider uh, submitting a presentation for that. This is in July, though. So, I mean, it's a little bit more enticing. <laughs> I think so. Um, and uh, Robin also has one here. The UB libraries are having a half-day symposium, Knowledge Frontiers from the Classroom to Operating Room. Um, so that's interesting about AR and VR and 3D technology. Very cool. A lot of great conferences and events going on here, too. So that's, that's another nice thing that you could actually put on here, too, if you're campus is hosting uh, another event you could add them down here looks like that's it so there, maybe we have some one typing left. But, we have one left yeah. uh, Maria is gonna sing us out apparently. that's <laughs> right Let me put that up here it's in writing we'll scroll up here she said she was gonna sing <laughs> is that a slow clap, a slow clap. <laughs> yeah Maybe that was for you. <laughs> All right, I am going to pull up my little slide deck. So, is this the right? Yeah, go all the way to, all the, the, way bottom, to the bottom. Sort of. I'm now a little bit off. opposite of a opposite of a Mac. There okay. you go. Yep. This one. So I told her this was going to take four minutes and fifteen seconds because I've actually done this presentation before. So I'd like to share with you a few of my favorite graphs. And we're going to do some singing. No. <laughs> yes, no. Yes. How do I click this to go? That's not working anymore. All right, here. So I had this math class about a year ago, and they really liked graph time, which was when I shared a graph at the beginning of every class that had something to do with what was going on in the world. And I asked them one day, because they were so interested in graph time, where are you going to get this news when class is over? Because they appeared to not be getting news from anywhere other than the graph we shared in class every day. And I said, well, how about I email the graphs to you? And they just looked at me blankly like students do in these days. And so I opened an Instagram account and started sharing graphs in there because that's something that they would all agree to keep participating in. And now I seem to have a new and very strange hobby. So these are a few of my favorite graphs. And... Um, I think we can do this without the music, so we're just going to do it without the music. Um, everybody is familiar with these are a few of my favorite things from Julie Andrews. Yes? Okay, so here we go. Ready? Cue the music. Da -da -da. Bike steering, angles, and world Snapchat users, SpaceX launch rockets, and Tinder date choosers, Netflix subscribers, and Amazon staff. These are a few of my favorite graphs. Game of Thrones viewers, Pokemon players, Fortnite Twitch watchers. And Okay, wait, I might have done that wrong, sorry. <laughs> Netflix makes content for viewers' behalf. These are a few of my favorite graphs. Okay, I sang the wrong verse there, sorry. <laughs> Electric autos and drivers of Uber, fall of the camera, isn't that a good one? And yield of the tuber, which is a potato. <laughs> Old faithful eruptions at Yellowstone. Adoption curves for my favorite smartphone. CO2 rise, Arctic ice end, robots taking jobs. I want students thinking about the cool trends, and then I avoid the sobs. Okay, there's more. <laughs> I'm going to skip the more so we get to lunch faster, but I just wanted to share. Uh, you can actually hear me sing the whole song on the Internet, but... Um, <laughs> I, I really did create an Instagram site, a Twitter site, and a Facebook site where I share about a graph a day from the news. Uh, it's great to use with students in all sorts of classes and just to learn yourself about what the actual trends in the world are as opposed to the data points we tend to see in the news. 
Um, so if you're interested, you can follow Graphs in the World on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. If you just Google Graphs in the World, all one word, you find them. And then you can follow along. The best thing I can say about this is I have had students walk up to me on campus that I have not had in class for more than a year, and they start talking about this week's graph with me. And that's pretty cool. That's it. Thank you very much. So I think that is a wrap, unless I missed something. I think that was the last, um, the last uh, contribution to the SUNY online session, SUNY on session. Um, so I want you to think about this for next year if you're coming. Uh, come prepare to showcase something, share something that you um, uh, are doing at your campus or that's cool that's happening at your campus. Uh, um, and uh, we do it every year. This one was the 11th annual. Next year will be the 12th annual. Uh, it's now time for lunch. Uh, lunch is out here and to our left. Um, like I said, you can eat in here if you like. You can also also go up to the fourth floor. There's a um, like a an area there that you can um, eat at. There's a little. Um, um uh, terrace, and if it, the weather's nice, I think you can actually go out there if you want. So enjoy your lunch. We'll be back here at, uh, what time is it now? At 1.30 um, for Marie Sini, um, who will be our next presenter. I'm very excited to have lunch now. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks, virtual.